Well, hi there. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. I'm your host for this madness every week, and I'd like to thank you for clicking on that link and joining us for this video presentation. This is the second in a series on Chess Base Lite, which is our free, yes, I said free, um, basically a database viewer, um, game viewer, and you can do database searches and all kinds of interesting things in Chess Base Lite, even without um, paying the extra for an activation key and registering the program. Also, these videos are good for people who own the full chess based program, new users who aren't quite sure how to go about using it. Everything you're going to see me do in Chess Base Lite 2009 in these videos is also applicable to the full version of the chess based program. I'm using an unregistered version of Chess Base Lite just to give you an idea how useful a tool this is, even in the free version, which is downloadable from www.chessbase.com. Dot com. Uh, you can go there, download this program, and install it. Last week we talked about uh, basically downloading a database, telling the program where it is, and how to play through games. This week I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend. Um, if you are using any chess base produced program, whether it's chess base Lite, chess base, Fritz, Ribka, any of them, uh, you're going to find this feature in all of them. And what it is, it's called the search mask. What the search mask allows you to do is find the games that you want to look at in a large database of games. Um, a, kind of a newer term for it is called data mining, which always makes me laugh, puts me in mind of that uh, great tune by the late, great Lee Dorsey working in a coal mine. I can hear little picks and, and axes and shovels going. But what it is, data mining is kind of a, a neat term. It's kind of evocative. What you've got with a lot of databases is you have a big, big, big mass of games, you know, so hundreds, thousands, in some cases millions of games. How do you find what you want? How do you go through all that rock and pull out the little gems and nuggets that you want to actually look at? And the way you do it is by using the search mask. The way you get to the search mask, uh, you may recall last week that I had a PGN database that I downloaded and I was working with. It's actually very small. You'll see down here, by the way, it's only down here in the lower left corner where I have the mouse moving. Um, whoops, it's only 80 games. Um, so it's not a real, real, real big database, but you can still use the search mask to find the things that you want. And because the database is so small, it'll find things extremely quickly like lightning, and that makes it really good for a video presentation. But this will work on any size database. If you're using the unregistered version, the un, uh, you know, if you haven't put in an activation key for this program, though, you can use databases of up to 32,000 games, which is still pretty sizable. I mean, let's be honest about it. That's a lot of stuff. Um, but you're still going to want to be able to just find the games that you want. To do that, you go to a database icon here in, on the database desktop, and you right-click. You single right-click, click on the, the right mouse button, and you get a menu of stuff. And if you go to search, you can click on it, and it brings up the search mask. This is your new best friend. This is the part of the program, probably the most important feature of chess base, chess base light, and if you're using the database functions of the playing program such as Fritz, it's it's a, a key crucial feature of these programs. Uh, it allows you to go into a database and find just the stuff that you want. In the game data, there's different tabs at the top for different kinds of searches you see across the top here. We're going to look at the game data tab. And this allows you to find games by player, by tournament, by year, by ECO code, if you know your codes. By the way, I do need to reset it because I was using this a short while ago for something unrelated. Um, ECO code, number of moves, there's all sorts of things you can search for. To do a basic search in the search mask is you're going to do a player search. Uh, we'll use that as an example. Um, I've looked at some of the player names in this tournament. I cheated, so I do know uh, some people I'm looking for. So let's type in a name. Uh, Baloch is the name we're looking for, B-A-L-O-G-H, and we just type that in right here, just type in the last name, no first name, no nothing. Um, we're going to keep ignore colors checked. What that means is if ignore colors is checked, it's going to find all the games of a player regardless of whether he played white or he played black. doesn't matter. So you can type the name in the white box as I've done, and it will still pull up games that that player played with the black pieces. So that's your basic game search. Put in a last name and click OK. Bada bing! We open up another window. This is your search results window. And we have found three games by players with the last name of Balak. There are two with white and one with the black pieces. And what's really neat about the search results screen 
is you don't ever have to leave this window. If you double click on a game over here, it will bring up a separate window where you can play through the game. But why we have a board here in the search results window is we can play a game right in the search results window. We just single click on a game right here as I've done to highlight it. And now we can use any of the methods we discussed in the last chess base workshop to play through this game. We can use the cursor keys on the keyboard as I'm doing right now. We can use the replay arrows under the board. We also have replay arrows up here we can use, up here in the, the toolbar, by the way, in case you missed where the mouse is. I'm swinging it around right now, where we can play forwards and backwards through a game. We can also go to the game menu and select replay and play through it automatically if we wish. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. We can just play through a game right there in the search results. Um, what's interesting here, though, is that we have found there are games by two different fellows with the last name of Baloch, um, Laszlo and Gabor are the two different guys. So if we want to differentiate between them, we can go back to the search mask and we can do a little bit different search. So let's close this window. You'll see I've gone up here to the X in the upper right corner and close the window. Right click, search, and you'll notice that it remembers your last search. Now if I was to exit the program and come back, it would not remember the search. It would blank this. But as long as you stay in the software, it will remember the results of your last search. Um, sometimes it's important, if you want to do a totally unrelated search, to remember to click the reset button down here, which blanks out everything you've done before. You'll notice that that last name has now disappeared. So if you ever want to blank all of your search criteria from all five of these tabs at one crack, go to the reset button down here at the bottom if you want to start a completely new unrelated search. A funny story about this was there was a fellow that had been uh, doing search for uh, the Grob in his large database of games and it wasn't pulling up any Grob games and he was uh, all hacked off about it and uh, as it turns out he had um, previously been doing a search for games by Bobby Fisher and he had left Fisher's name in the player blank and he'd gone down here and typed in the ECO code for the grob and he was getting nothing and he was all upset and I, I had to tell him well see Bobby Fisher never played the grob so what you've done is you've combined searches and you have to click the reset button to get rid of your last search before you do another one however I didn't have to do that here I just did it to illustrate something but instead we'll go in and put the name in here. And we know there's two different guys named Baloff, so uh, let's say I just want Laszlo's games. So I click in this box over here to the right, and I'll type in an L. And that brings up an important point about doing searches. And that is this. When you put in player names, it's last name first, first name last, just like you see it in a telephone directory, a printed phone book. Um, you don't go, you know, they don't have people alphabetized by their first names. They have them alphabetized by their last names. The search mask works the same way. The left hand box is for last names. The right hand box is for first names or first initials. Um, so I just want Laszlo's games. I put in Baloch L, click OK, and bing, there's the two games by that player right there. And it has eliminated that third game by Gabor Baloch. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you when you use the search mask is you can narrow the search by putting in a first initial or a first name. Usually the first initial is enough. However, again there's always a but if you're using a really big database like the mega database you'll find out for example if you type in Karpov A you're not only going to get Anatoly Karpov's games you're also going to get games by Alexander Karpov. So in that case, you would put in AN if you just want Anatoly's games. Or if you want Alexander Karpov's games, you'd type in AL in this box right here. Um, there are other tweaks you can do, by the way. If you want only the wins of a particular player, you can click that box, and now it's going to pull up, regardless of what color, because ignore colors is still checked, um, it's going to pull up all of Laszlo Baloch's wins in this tournament. And unfortunately, Mr. Block was not having a very good day, and there are no games found. He actually lost both of his games in this tournament. Um, going back to the search mask, you can uncheck that. Um, if you want to find games where two players played against each other, you very simply can go down here and um, type in a second name. And now it will find all the games that these two players played against each other which we find right here. We have one game that these two players contested. We can single click on it to highlight it and play through it. 
just as pretty as you please and then either click on this X or as I'm about to do hit the escape key to close that window and go back to the database desktop you can do all kind of searches in this program if you want to find all the games now let's get rid of ignore colors now and uh, instead we will look for all the games that someone named Balak we're not going to put an initial in here played as white in this tournament by unchecking ignore colors suddenly the difference between white and black becomes a big deal so we're going to find all the games played with the white pieces by someone named Balak after we uncheck ignore colors we click OK and we get the same two games turns out this fellow had two games as white now I guarantee you there were more games in this tournament than the 80 games in this database otherwise you know why would he get the white pieces only um, these are just the games that were that were submitted but uh, we see that we have two games in which this fellow had the white pieces so that's how uh, ignore colors affects the search if you put in uh, a name and uncheck ignore colors it will be only the games that that player played with that color pieces um, another interesting thing to bring up about the search mask and this seems counterintuitive to some people but I need to bring this up now and that is this the more information you put into the search mask some people seem to think that you need to fill out every dang thing in this display you don't because the more stuff that you enter into the search mask the fewer games you're going to get back if you just do a general search like this if I do a general search ignoring colors for a player with this name I'm gonna get three games if I add more information such as an initial an ECO code whatever it happens to be rating information I'm gonna get less information back I'll give you an example and this is this is a really wild one I just learned this this morning and it's kind of a neat trick to know if all you want to do is just look at a bunch of games and you don't really care who played them let's just do this instead let's look for all the players in the tournament whose last name began with B click OK and look we get a whole bunch of stuff we get Bala and Braun um, we have a whole bunch more games it's not three games anymore it's more than three whereas if we go in back to the search mask and add more information as we did before click OK and now we only get three games another thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're gonna look for games by player and I got bit by this one uh, just this morning is you need to spell the name correctly you need to know how the player's name is spelled when I first went looking for a game by this player I accidentally put a U in the name and when I clicked OK I got nothing no games found computers cannot make intuitive leaps computers cannot look at what I typed and say oh well he didn't mean to put a U in there you know a human being would be able to look at a game list with all the players names and look at this and say oh well he probably meant this without the U but a computer can't do that so if you put a U in that name and click OK you're gonna get nothing you're gonna get bupkis because a computer can't make that kind of intuitive leap um, it's called Geigo garbage in garbage out you know if you put garbage in the search mask you're gonna get garbage back you're gonna get nothing or you're gonna get results that you don't want now I'm not going to show you every single search that you can do in this search mask but what I will talk about is the different things that you can search for um, I will do I do I'll do one here that's kind of interesting which is this ECO codes um, real interesting way to look for games is uh, a lot of people use chess base and chess base light to look for games of a particular opening and the easiest way to do this in the software is to do it by ECO code if you know the codes if you don't know them there's not a facility in the software to teach them to you would be a cool feature some kind of a ECO drill where we show you a sequence of moves and you have to type in the code um, personally I don't think there's too many people that would be able to pass such a test there are 500 ECO codes and I think there are probably very few people who know them all but it'd be kind of a neat drill maybe someday we'll have that in the software but right now you need to know the ECO codes so let's just say and I, I just happen to know the codes I want all the games with the Roy Lopez so I type in C60 in this box and in this one I go to C99 and that's uh, 39 codes all of the Roy Lopez games uh, all the Roy Lopez cover C60 to C99 I click OK and in this 80 game tournament oh there's Balak again um, we have um, two games 
of the Roy Lopez out of 80 in this tournament, which was kind of an interesting thing. I was surprised by that. I actually expected to see more. If I wanted all the games of the Kings Indian defense, I would actually change the C's to E's. It's actually E60 to E99. And we click OK. And we have, once again, two games. Um, you can narrow it down if you want to do um, just the games of, let's say, the Roy Lopez Exchange. Whoops, sorry, clicked on the wrong thing. Um, or let's just say we want to do one ECO code. We want to do Roy Lopez variants, the oddball Roy Lopez's. We could put C60 in both of these boxes. And that way we're not looking for a range of ECO codes, we're looking for one specific ECO code by putting the same code in each box. We click OK. No games found. Didn't expect there would be. This was a very small tournament after all. But that's, that's a way to use the ECO code box. If you, if you know the codes and you're looking for them, you can use these two boxes to find games by opening Encyclopedia of Chess Openings code. Uh, range of moves. If you want a game that was one move to 22 moves long, you just leave it alone and click that let's make it 20 we'll call it we'll go for true miniatures 1 to 20 moves you click OK and if there were any miniatures in this tournament this will pull them up and look at this there's a whole bunch of games that were uh, actually very short this one was only 14 moves long play through it real quick to which uh, oh look at that that is just ugly stuff right there check it out let's go back go back a few moves and watch this this is neat and then suddenly he doesn't see it coming. Bing! And the rooks are forked. And uh, Black says, nah, I guess we'll call it a day. I'll resign. Um, so that's actually kind of a cool thing. It's a cool way to find opening traps uh, is actually using this particular feature of the search mask. You go in here and you set it from move one to a rel you know, relatively no low number. 20 being, you know, anything at 20 moves or less is considered a miniature. Um, you can use that feature to find opening traps, things that, you know, opening mishaps for different players. Up here you can type in the name of a tournament. If you're dealing with the database with annotated games, you can put an annotator's name here. Um, if you're looking for games with uh, strong players, you can check ELO codes here. Uh, the problem with doing ELO codes, though, is a lot of times when people do databases and put them on the internet, they don't have that information and they don't put ELO numbers in for the players they're rating. Um, so I don't use it very often. Uh, reason being that sometimes you may have a super mega tournament where everybody was rated 2,700 plus, but because they didn't put the EC or the uh, ELO ratings in for uh, the players, you do a search like that and it brings up no games and you know good and well that those players were all super strong so I don't use this very often but if you need it it's there you can also do result um, in case you don't know if you're if you're fairly new to chess 1-0 uh, basically means that white won 0-1 oh, means that black won 1-1-1 one half, one half is a draw 0-0 zero, zero means no result um, not really, I've never seen that, but it's there. Uh, you can find games in which the person who input the game did not put a result in for the game. This is actually kind of useful, and I'll tell you why. Uh, something that just popped into my head is if you're one of those correspondence players who's playing a bazillion games at one time and keeps a running database of all of your correspondence games, that's actually pretty useful because you can pull up out of a large database of your correspondence games, maybe hundreds of games that you played throughout your career, you can pull up the games that are still in progress by using this toggle, this OO. So that's a possibility there. You may not use it much, but it's there if you need it. Games that ended in mate, games that ended in stalemate, games that ended with a check uh, can all be found this way. You can combine criteria, by the way. If you want to find all of the Roy Lopez games, C60 to C99 that are 20 moves or less long that end in a mate for white. You can put all that in there and click OK. Just be aware that you would not find as many games as you would find if it was, if you uncheck mate and it was white wins in under 20 moves in the Roy Lopez, which would not be as many games as you would get if you uncheck moves and you're just looking for white wins in the Roy Lopez, which is not as many games as you would get 
if you were just looking for Roy Lopez games and not worrying about a particular result. Once again, remember that the more information you put in, the less information you get back when you do the search. It seems counterintuitive to some folks, but it's the truth. The more stuff you put in the search mask, the fewer games you get back. So that's basically how the search mask works. Again, this is just one of the five tabs in the search mask. There are others up here, and we will look at some of those others as well. But right now, this is your basic game data, game header. Uh, what a game header is, is down here. It's this stuff. Player name, tournament, year, number of moves, white win, all the stuff that's in the game header at the top of a game is stuff that you can find in this part, the game data tab of the search mask, which again is your new best friend. If you're going to work with large databases, you're going to work an awful lot with this, and this particular feature of this software will save you hours and hours of research. Trust me when I tell you, I've played this game long enough, I played it years before we had computers, and when you needed to find a particular game, a particular game where Capablanca played Rady in New York 1924, and you didn't have the tournament book, but you remembered seeing it in a Reinfeld book somewhere, you had to go to the shelf, pull the books down, flip through pages, and try to find that game, and it would take you half the morning to find the one game you wanted, whereas in this software, half the morning, nothing, it would take you maybe a couple of seconds. Um, this is this is an absolute amazing tool, and this search mask, what you're looking at right here on the screen, is what makes that possible. So play around with it, learn to use it, learn the features of the game data tab, and in weeks to come we'll look at some of the other stuff that you can do with the search mask. Until next week, when we get together again in Chess Base Workshop, have fun!